Hi guys, it's B2P Joe and B2P Loom here and we're on our first Explore 2021. Now unfortunately it's not quite the normal Explore because we are in the middle of a lockdown, um, although we are allowed to meet up and go out for our exercise, which is what we're doing today. We're taking a look back at some of the places that we first visited when we established Beyond the Point 10 years ago this year. It really doesn't feel like that long. So we're going to be taking a look at the pillbox that remains on Canvey Island and one on Benfleet mainland and we're also here today in this very spot where there used to be one although it's since been either removed or covered up with earth. So the one that used to be here would have been of the Essex lozenger variety probably a bit like the ones you might have seen in our Bradwell and Burnham on Crouch videos which you can see a clip of here. It would have gone in the seawall at one end and faced out the other side. This is a spot on the Canvey Newlands facing out to Hadley and the water there. Um, also, the seawall was built up sort of roughly in the 70s and 80s to this new higher level that you can see behind us. But what we're standing on would have been the original height, so it's probable that the pillbox actually could still be somewhere under our feet. Let's go and check out some of the others. Walking further east along the sea wall, we found the site of yet another Essex lozenger type pillbox. It would have been at the original sea wall level somewhere around this spot. Broken concrete is still visible and perhaps under this mound the pillbox still survives somewhere. However this concrete is probably added later as part of the sea wall pathway. We then pass the base of the demolished concrete barge, probably used in the D-Day landings. So we're now a little bit further along the sea wall, more on the south side of the island, in the southeast corner. And this little corner in the sea wall would have been the site of another similar pillbox. You can actually see it in this quite low quality footage from several decades ago before it was demolished. It's got a great view out to the mouth of the Thames estuary here. Today this spot is actually a memorial to the 1944 American bomber crash which crashed out at Canby Point out in the distance there. We've made other videos on this but earlier in the war it was actually a hot spot for defence. So it's getting colder today, I've even had to put my woolly hat on. But we've come to the southwest point of Canvey to here, where once there would have been a peel box. And it's so hard to remove, they have actually had to build the seawall around it. This isn't the original uh, top of it, however, this would have been built on top. So the peel box is still probably below our feet, uh, which is rather impressive. Now, as you can see there, there's a jetty, which dates back to around 1930, which was for the gas terminal uh, behind Liam and two pillboxes are built, one the other side of the jetty, and you've got this one here. Because this site was so strategically important, that's why these defences were put in. There are a few more along the seawall in that direction, um, however, unfortunately, they're all the same. The pillbox is underneath, but not one you, you can actually see. So we've made it to Canvey's last remaining peel box. 
a type FW398. Now this is a different style to the ones that would have been on the seawall. Uh, on the seawall you would have had the Essex Lozenger ones which would have sort of stretched both sides of the wall to get both views. Um, whereas this one is more a sort of square shape. Um, it's in quite a good condition, there's a lot of rubbish around. Um, but structurally it's not too bad. You can see in the um, loophole here you've still got the metal reinforcements. So this pillbox, I think it could actually have been the first explorer that I ever did, probably around 2010, about a year before Beyond the Point. And I came here with my uncle who was quite interested in local history and going sort of to the sort of hidden spots. And he showed us this, me and my parents, we went down this farm track straight in through the gate. It felt quite brazen. I wasn't used to sort of going off the beaten track at the time. Um, but we sort of just went straight for the pillbox and we managed to get inside. There's like a mattress, maybe like a dead fox skeleton in there or something. Um, all very typical. But this was like one of the first sort of pillboxes I actually explored knowing that it was from World War II. Um, this one here, it's got like little nails sticking out the side where camouflage would have been draped to conceal it. It probably did face a farm track way back in the day and would have been just a little bit more of an inland defence after the ones along the sea wall that we saw earlier. So we're at the entrance now. We thought it was sealed up, but it's not actually. The uh, This fence has actually been broken off. You can see just behind me there, we've got a little defensive hole, um, probably something like a pistol or something would have been used there just to, uh, you know, when Germans were coming in, teach them a lesson before they actually had the opportunity to go inside. Um, the entrance itself is actually rather narrow, and of course if you did have a weapon it would be much harder to pull that out in a smaller space. But uh, we're going to see what it's like inside. We can work our way through the rubbish. Very cramped, you've got quite a big step down as well. Pretty horrible. But it's the first time we've been here in about 10 years. Oh well, 12 years for me even. Big Joe hasn't even been in here yet. I haven't. First time. Um, not a huge amount to see in here. Looks like it's been used uh, sort of at some, some sort of man cave or something. Um, it's not actually that much graffiti in here, which is uh, quite surprising. You've got little bits of paint, but um, nothing too much. You can see on the um, uh, ceiling roof here, where you've got the uh, strips like that, and that those marks would have come from the wood from when the concrete was cast. So you've got the concrete roof, and of course the brick walls. So we've just made it to the Benfleet peel box here. As you can see, it looks quite different to the ones that are on canopy, most notably because of the concrete lumps that are on top of it. Now, it might look like it's fallen apart, and in fact, at the bottom it is, but those concrete lumps are actually built to help disguise the peel box, to make it blend in with the local environment even more. Let's say, if you look down the bottom, the bricks are falling off, concrete's falling off, you can see the metal wiring. Um, it's not in the best condition, but it's been here for decades, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be here for a few more decades. Definitely. It's been really good actually checking out a couple of pillboxes all in one go today, both on Benfleet and Canvey. Um, the home guard for the area, I believe they may have sort of worked together back in the day, no doubt being ready to man these pillboxes and were probably trained in getting here quick in case an invasion happened. And it's nice to sort of see several places to understand the wider context, not only of sort of the towns and um, the area, but also of how the whole country would have been defended because Canvey Island marks the start of the General Headquarters Line East, 
which was one of the major defensive lines on the east coast of England against an invasion. So let's go and have a bit more of a look around this, this bad boy and see what we've got. So we've had a really good look around a lot of pillboxes and the sites of them. Obviously not all of them are here today. I think there used to be about nine on Canvey originally. Canvey also had a lot of other big defences which are now gone. But it's been great to see them all. And actually to sort of show it as part of like a little walk for you guys to have a look at yourselves because all of the places we've been today are all on public land. So do have a look for yourselves. Now this year marks 10 years of Beyond the Point. Back in 2011 we first set up the website um, when we were exploring places like this and we didn't even know that they existed right on our doorstep. So this year we're hoping to make our explore explores even bigger and better than before. So if you know anywhere where we should be going or if you want to join us on an explore then do let us know. And of course don't forget to subscribe, like us, tweet us, follow us, you know what to do.